Getting Puppeteer to run on your Heroku Dino was as easy as adding a Heroku Puppeteer build pack to your Heroku Dino's configuration. The nice thing about Heroku was that they had a very generous free plan uh, up until November 28th, 2022, when they decided to get rid of it. So now the nice thing about Heroku is, is uh, while desperately searching for a free Heroku alternative, I stumbled upon Render.com. Now, Render has an actual free plan, but I struggled a bit with figuring out how to deploy an express server running Puppeteer as a web service there. After all, there are no build packs here. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Before we get started, there are some system requirements that you're going to want to have on your machine. You're going to want to have Node.js installed on your system. We're also going to be using Git for version control, so you're going to want to have Git installed as well. Ideally, you'll also have an account on an external hosting service for version control. For example, we'll be using GitHub in this tutorial, so a GitHub account will be ideal. And finally, some sort of code editor. I'll be using Visual Studio Code, but you can use whichever one you'd like. Okay, now that we're all set, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new directory. I'm going to call this one Puppeteer Render. Next, I'm going to cd into that directory. I'm going to say cd Puppeteer Render. Now, I'm using VS Code, so from the command palette, you can install the code command in your path to be able to run code dot within the terminal, which will open this directory from within VS Code itself. Now let's open up a new terminal. I'm going to create a new package.json file. I'm going to initialize that with npm init-y. And we need a start script, so within package.json, I'm going to add a script called start, and that script will run node index. So node will run our index.js file, which we will create right now. At the top of our file, let's set the express variable to require express, so we are importing express. In our terminal, let's run npm install or npm i express to add it to our package.json dependencies, and there it is. Within the index.js file, let's set the app variable to the invocation of express. And now that we have an express server, let's have the app listen on a port. We're going to write port 4000 for now. And a callback function as a second parameter, we're going to say console log listening on port 4000. Let's actually set that port to a variable. So we're going to set the port variable to process.env.port or 4000 by default. So we're going to have it uh, listen on that port variable there. And we're going to say listening on port within the template literal string, the variable port. When we deploy this app, we don't always know what port the app is going to be running on. That's why we have this process.env.port environment variable. Otherwise, we're just going to be listening on port 4000 in development. Running npm start now in the terminal will invoke our start script, and we have a running, albeit very basic, express server. Let's get started writing some endpoints. The first endpoint will be app.get to our root. As a second parameter, it will expose the request and response objects. It'll just send as a response, render puppeteer server is up and running. Okay, so one more time, we're going to clear this out. Within the terminal, run npm start to start our express server. Then from a browser window, you can navigate to localhost 4000, just the root. And if we refresh this page, we can see the text render puppeteer server is up and running. So it is working. I'm going to make this app a little bit more interesting. Let's add one more endpoint. I'm going to write app.get to the slash scrape endpoint as a second parameter. Of course, I'm going to expose the request and response objects and Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invoke a scrape logic method, which we haven't written out yet. So I'm going to create a file called scrapelogic.js. I'm going to create a new function called scrape logic. Then I'm going to export it as a named export using module.exports equals scrape logic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to access the response object that Express conveniently provides for us, and I'm going to pass it as a parameter to scrape logic. And within the scrape logic method, I'm going to access this response object and use it to send a response hello from scrape logic. Now that I have this modularized function, I'm going to test it out. In the terminal, I'm going to run npm start, and our server started listening on port 4000. So now let's test out this brand new endpoint, and we have a reference error scrape logic is not defined. So what we need to do is remember to import the scrape logic method. We're going to set const scrape logic to require this local scrape logic file. 
that should work now. It's a named export, not a default. So we're going to clear this out and run npm start one more time. It's going to say listening on port 4000. And we have hello from scrape logic when we visit that endpoint. So everything is working just as expected. Let's make things a little bit more interesting by doing some internet scraping using the Puppeteer library. So we're here on the Puppeteer npm page. And in the getting started section, we can see the installation script for Puppeteer. So all we have to do is run npm install or npm i Puppeteer within our terminal. And that will install Puppeteer into our node modules as well as our package.json dependencies. In the Puppeteer docs here, we can see that when you install Puppeteer, it automatically downloads a recent version of Chromium. This can be a little bit tricky when you deploy your project to a hosting provider like Heroku or Render, as it calls out here, and we'll see why in a little bit. I like this basic example on the Puppeteer docs page in which they scrape the Google Chrome developers search results and return the first result. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that entire example and paste it into our scrape logic function. Because we're using await all over the place over here, I'm going to make this scrape logic function asynchronous. Next, I'm going to import Puppeteer at the top of this scrape logic file by setting the Puppeteer variable to require Puppeteer. Finally, I'd like to use the response object that was passed in earlier as a parameter to send the scrape title as a response. Okay, so one more time, I'm going to go ahead and clear out my terminal here, and I'm going to run npm start. Let's refresh this scrape endpoint here, give it a second for Puppeteer to run. And we have results. We have the title of this blog post is Customize and Automate User Flows Beyond Chrome DevTools Recorder. So that looks good to me. I'm just actually going to change this console log and the response to be the same results. So I'm going to make a log statement with the full title. I'm going to take this out of the console log statement here so that we have the title of this blog post is... Uh, full title. I'm going to make that the template literal string, and I'm also going to have the response sent be the same. So let's run that one more time. I'm going to run npm start, and let's refresh this scrape endpoint here. Give it a second, and yep, they are the same now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this scrape logic in a try catch finally. So we're going to wrap this logic in a try, and then if there's an error of some sort, we're going to catch that error, and we're going to go ahead and also include a finally. So within the finally scope, we're going to have this await browser close. So the browser, the Puppeteer browser, is going to close no matter what. Just in case we have an error, let's go ahead and console error it out. Okay, I just want you to notice that this browser variable is outside of our try catch finally block, and that's because we want it to be accessible within the finally scope over here. So if something goes wrong with Puppeteer's launch method over here, then that's going to crash our app, and that'll be important to note in a little bit. Okay, so keep that in mind. In case we do catch an error though, let's also send a response to the user. So what we're gonna do here is write response.send. Something went wrong while running Puppeteer, for example, and we're also gonna go ahead and send the error over. Now that we have our catch block, let's test it out. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna throw um, like an example error, a dummy error within the try block. We're gonna say throw new error, and the error is just gonna say, whoops, it's gonna simulate you know something going wrong during the puppeteer scraping process, okay? So let's go into our terminal. We're gonna clear this out and run npm start. Okay, it's listening on port 4000. Let's run the scrape endpoint. Let's see what happens. And we have an error, and it says something went wrong while running Puppeteer. We have error, whoops, and it looks like our try catch block is working. Okay, let's go ahead and remove this. And that's going to be our Express server for this demo. What we want right now is for the production version, the deployed version of this Express server to work exactly like it does in development. So now we're going to move on to actually deploying the app. Now I'm going to create a brand new public repository on GitHub. I'm going to call my repo Puppeteer Render, but you can call it whatever you want. And I'm going to click on Create Repository over here. Conveniently, GitHub gives us this list of commands over here to get started with this new repository. So I'm going to copy the first one. Before I do that, I'm actually going to git init, and that's going to stage all of my changes here. Next, I'm going to paste this command that I copied earlier that's going to add my remote origin. Now, I don't want git to track this huge node modules directory, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a .git ignore file, and within .git ignore, I'm going to add the node modules directory. Also, if you have any environment variables in a .env file, you're going to want to make sure that git it isn't tracking that env file either. 
All right, so we're all set here. Let's go into our terminal and run a git status. Okay, so we're gonna see what files git is tracking. Let's go back to GitHub. Let's copy the second command they've given us, git branch main. So we're gonna set that as our uh, branch right now. We're gonna add all of our changes. We're gonna git commit. We're gonna say first commit as our first message here. And finally, we're gonna run a git push. We don't have an upstream branch, so let's copy this command that they've given us. And we've pushed to our repository. Let's go back to Google Chrome and restart this page. And there we go, we have our first changes from our first commit. Let's move on to deploying on render.com. If you don't have a render account, you can click on the sign in button and create a new account. Now that I've created a new account, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new web service. I'm gonna click on the new web service button in my dashboard. Render has a way for you to connect your render account to GitHub for automatic deployments, but I think it only lets you do that for one GitHub account. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this public GitHub repository URL and paste it in as a public Git repository. Okay, now I'm going to add a unique name for my service. This one's going to be called Puppeteer Render. Again, you can call it whatever you want. The region is going to be US East. This is going to be off my main branch of my Git repository. The build command will be a little bit different. I'm going to run npm install so that in installs all of my dependencies before it starts. The start command of course is node index.js. It also has an advanced section where you can add environment variables. I'm going to leave all of these the same and I'm going to create a web service. Okay so let's wait a second while it starts up our brand new render web service. All right looks like the deployment was successful. It's listening on port 10,000. We check out our render link here. It says render puppeteer servers up and running. Let's check out that scrape and point. Give it a second here. Let's check why it's hanging. It's taking a little bit long. Let's go into the logs here. Looks like there's some sort of error. Let's check it out in detail. So it looks like it couldn't find Chromium. It's an unhandled promise. So remember earlier that our Puppeteer launch script was outside of our try catch block. So that's what's throwing the error here. This is a known issue for render and other hosting providers. So we're going to have to set up our deployment process for our Puppeteer web service a little bit differently. So what we're going to do is we're going to dockerize our Puppeteer web service by adding a Docker file. If you look up Puppeteer Docker, you'll see that Puppeteer offers its own Docker image that comes pre-bundled with Chromium and the dependencies required for Puppeteer, as well as a pre-installed Puppeteer version. In our package.json, we can see that we're running Puppeteer version 19.7.2, so we'll just replace the version that Puppeteer is running in its example Docker image here, and we'll substitute it with our own. In our Docker file, let's go ahead and paste the docker pull command that Puppeteer offers in its example. Next, we're going to replace the Puppeteer version in the example with our own Puppeteer version 19.7.2, so let's go ahead and paste that new version. And now, instead of docker pull we're going to say from that's the syntax for the docker file that's going to be our base image okay for our web service next we're going to set some environment variables here so from the puppeteer docs we can see that if we want to skip the chromium download uh, when installing puppeteer which is something we do want to do uh, because our app comes pre-bundled with chromium from this puppeteer docker image we can set this puppeteer skip chromium download equals true environment variable and puppeteer won't download chromium a second time Next, because we have our own version of Chromium, we want to let Puppeteer know where to find that Chromium path. So we're going to set the Puppeteer executable path to user bin Google Chrome stable. And just for you to see where that's coming from, if we go to the Puppeteer public GitHub repository and we go into the Docker directory and inspect their Docker file, we can see that their entry path for their Puppeteer Docker image is actually Google Chrome stable. All right, so that's where Chromium is coming from. All right, and now let's write the rest of this Docker file. We're going to set our work directory to user source app. That's where we want our app to be running. Next, we're going to copy the package.json and the package.lock.json files into our work directory. Then we're going to run npm ci for npm clean install, since we want this to be a repeatable automated build process. Then we're going to copy the rest of the repository's files into our working directory. And finally, we're going to have our start command for our Docker container. We're going to copy the start script from our package.json file, node index. We're going to say command is within an array, the strings node and index.js. So this will be our start command for our app, okay? And this will be our completed Docker file.
So now I'm going to push this change to my public git repository. I'm going to run a git status. You see I've added a Docker file. I'm going to add this change and I'm going to add a commit message that says added Docker file. Okay, next I'm going to run a git push and we see the commit has been pushed to GitHub. So I'm going to go to my GitHub repository and refresh the page and we see the Docker file has been added with all of my changes within it. Now I'm going to make another slight change here to the way that I launch Puppeteer. So we'll go to our scrape logic function here and we'll go right into the puppeteer launch method and it's going to take an object as an argument within that object I'm going to set a key of executable path now I'm going to set this value to be the puppeteer executable path in the process.env so in my environment variables only if we are currently in production. So if process.env.node.env is production, then we'll set it to the puppeteer path in my environment variables. Otherwise, we'll just use the default executable path that puppeteer provides using puppeteer.executable path. To use the environment variables, we're going to run npm install.env in the terminal. And then at the top of our file here, we're going to import.env by writing require.env.config. Next, we're going to set some launch arguments for Chromium. We're going to set the no sandbox flag to disable Linux sandboxing. We'll also set a flag to disable the set UID sandbox. We'll also set arguments of single process and no zygote so we don't run too many Chromium processes at the same time. Next, we'll run a git status to see our modified files. Then we'll run a git add to add those files to our commit. Then we'll add a commit message that will say updated args and executable path for Puppeteer launch. Finally, run a git push. And let's refresh our GitHub page to see our latest commit message. Back on render.com, we can go ahead and delete this old service since it's running a node runtime and we want it to be a dockerized web service. So we're going to go ahead and run this delete web service command here. Let's create a brand new web service. So again, we're going to connect our public GitHub repository to render.com and we're just going to paste this URL right here and click continue. Then we're going to go ahead and set the name for our service again. It'll be Puppeteer Render. Our region will be Ohio US East and we can see here it has detected the runtime for our web service which is Docker because of our Docker file right here. Okay so that's auto detected. Next, let's set some environment variables for our web service. We're going to add an environment variable from our Docker file. We're going to take this Puppeteer skip Chromium download and set it to true. Next, we'll add another environment variable, the Puppeteer executable path, and we'll set that to user bin Google Chrome stable. We're going to leave all of this the same, and we're just going to create the web service now. So render is now going to create our web service. It's going to pull that base puppeteer image. It's going to install the dependencies, copy the files and directories over, and it's going to start that container. Now that render has successfully spun up our Node.js server, let's try out that scrape endpoint one more time to see if puppeteer is actually working in production. Also keep in mind I'm on the free tier here so the first request after your service is first spun up may take a little while but subsequent requests should be faster. And we see here that we have a successfully scraped response from our web service which means that we've finally been able to run Puppeteer on our containerized production express server running on render.com. One more tip that I want to add is that similarly to Heroku, Render's free tier web services spin down after 15 minutes of inactivity. To avoid this, you can use a website like Uptime Robot to continuously ping your web service every 5 minutes to keep it awake. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial on how to run Puppeteer on an express server on render.com. I'll include a link to the public repository containing the source code that I've written in this video in the description below. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment. If you'd like to see more videos from me, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel.